Hello, and welcome to another episode of A Spoonful of Species, your go-to place for conservation through baking. My name is Caitlin, and I'm an interpretive naturalist with years of experience educating the public about animals both aquatic and terrestrial. I also have a love of baking. So each week, we will bake an animal-themed dessert and talk about the conservation for that animal and what you can do for it right at home. This week, I partnered up with my friend Rebecca, who has an Instagram that you should totally follow called Bake Good Choices. And we made some delicious hot cocoa bombs that were snow leopard themed, so as you can tell by the snow leopard rosettes on top. Snow leopards get their name from being in the snow and having their leopard spots. Their leopard spots are just like this, and each leopard has their own individual set of spots that are unique, just like your fingerprints are unique on your hands. To make your own marshmallows for your hot cocoa bomb, you will need cornstarch, three tablespoons of unflavored gelatin powder, one cup of cold water, one pound of granulated sugar, two ounces of light corn syrup, and four egg whites. To make your marshmallows, first coat a sheet pan with olive oil or cooking spray. Sprinkle gelatin over about a half of cup of water and set aside until it's soft. Combine the sugar, glucose, corn syrup, and the remaining one half cup of water in a saucepan. Cook over medium heat. Place egg whites in a mixing bowl with the whisk attachment and wait until the sugar mixture in your pan on the stove has reached about 230 degrees Fahrenheit. Whip your egg whites at a high speed then until the sugar reaches about 245 degrees Fahrenheit. When the syrup reaches this temperature, remove it from the heat and lower the speed of your mixture. Pour the mixture in a steady stream onto the egg white mix until it is fully combined. Return the mixer to a high speed, and as soon as the meringue is light, smooth, and fluffy, pour it onto your prepared sheet pan and spread evenly. You will then let it cool for anywhere from six to eight hours, and then when you're ready to cut it, you will dust with the powdered sugar on both sides, chop it into the pieces or the shapes that you like, and then coat again with powdered sugar to keep them from sticking from one another. leopards are magnificent animals that are highly designed to live in very cold, very high altitude climates. They're found in mountains in Central Asia, and they can be found in areas up to 18,000 feet in elevation. That is over three and almost three and a half miles high, straight up. Um, so they do come down from those mountainous areas to hunt, uh, which we'll talk about here in just a minute. But first, I'd like to talk about what adaptations they have to help them survive in those high mountainous areas. So first, they have these big, wide feet with fur on the underside of their feet that act as insulation and almost like snowshoes to give them traction as they walk uh, through the snow in the mountains. Snow leopards' tails are as long or longer than their bodies, and they use them for balance as they climb through those high mountain areas in uh, Central Asia. They also use their tails as scarves, wrapping them around themselves when they lay down to help keep them warm. Snow leopards are also extremely fluffy, and they use their thick, dense fur to help keep them warm in their snowy areas where they live, and their fur can be up to five inches thick which just makes me think how cozy it would be to snuggle up next to one. Because they live at such high elevations, humans, like you or I, would not do well there and we struggle to track them in their natural environment because they live so high in elevation and they have such wide ranges where they live. Snow leopards are also really good at hunting and they can leap at animals and um, take down animals that are over six times their size if they feel like it, but they prefer to eat things like deer and mountain goats, um, sheep, that kind of thing. So this becomes a problem because they will come down from their high elevations in order to hunt and they're hunting on human farmland where you or I might live. And the farmers are obviously upset because these 
beautiful snow leopards are killing their livestock, usually some form of sheep. And this is a problem because then the uh, farmers want to hunt the snow leopards to prevent this from happening. This isn't the snow leopards fault. They're just doing what they naturally do. But there's really important conservation initiatives that work with the farmers and the governments in Central Asia to be able to um, repair this relationship between snow leopards and farmers. To make your own snow leopard hot cocoa bomb, you will need melting chocolate, white and dark chocolate is what I used, a circular mold or spherical mold, cocoa powder, marshmallows, and popsicle sticks. First, melt the white chocolates in the microwave for 30 seconds at a time until just liquefied. Fill the circular mold about a fourth of the way full with the white chocolate and use the popsicle stick to coat all sides of the mold in a thin layer with the melting chocolate. Let the mold set until the chocolate is firm and then peel out of the molds. After taking the half spheres out of the molds, melt the edges smooth using a warmed pan on the stove. Fill the spheres with cocoa powder, marshmallows, and any other decoration or flavoring you might like. Then melt the edge of the unfilled side of the spheres, place on top of the filled sections, smoothing out the excess chocolate that melt out on the sides. Pipe the melted dark chocolate onto the spheres in a leopard rosette pattern, and then pour hot milk over the hot cocoa bomb and enjoy. Ready? leopards are crepuscular, which means that they hunt and are active at dawn and dusk instead of being active during the day or at night, which also makes tracking them a little difficult because they're only active during a small window of time every day. The leopard populations are on the decline. Um, they're estimated to be only four to 6,500 of them left. And this is not only because of the farmers who um, hunt them whenever they kill their livestock, but also mostly because of poaching, because of their beautiful pattern coat. Uh, poachers want to sell that coat on the black market, um, which is obviously making the populations decline even more than they already are. So the conservation effort called the Snow Leopard Trust at snowleopard.org definitely goes be above and beyond to help save these species from extinction. So Snow Leopard Trust is based out of Seattle, Washington, and they connect with the farmers and the local communities where snow leopards live to help them and to help save snow leopards as well. It's really important that not only do we save snow leopards, but that we also help farmers in those local communities who just need to make a living and they need their livestock to survive. So by helping each other out, we're able to help everyone and save the snow leopards, as well as save the farmers' livelihood in the livestock. If you're interested in learning more, go to snowleopard.org and visit the Snow Leopard Trust. This website will give you more information about what they're doing in the local communities and how you can help right from home. So you can donate, you can volunteer your time, especially if you're near uh, Seattle, Washington, where they're based out of, then that's a great place to get involved in helping save these beautiful snow leopards. And you can also buy from their store and all of the proceeds go back into the Snow Leopard Trust. They have all kinds of really cute items from shirts uh, to mugs to earrings and everything in between. So go ahead, check it out and see if there's anything that interests you. You can also donate a snow leopard at your local zoo or aquarium, especially if the snow leopard uh, is from an AZA facility, which has species survival plans, which help breed snow leopards to be able to keep their genetic diversity high and help release them back out into the wild. 
If you like this episode, go ahead and subscribe so you can see more every week. You can also check out Big Good Choices on Instagram. Thank you so much, Rebecca, for helping me this week, and I hope to see you all next week.